Chapter 3 I wish I had kept my promise. I wish I had put up a fight. Made Kathleen drag me out of my room. But I didn't. I couldn't upset Grandfather like that, so I left my room like a whipped puppy. I walked out passively, but I refused to acknowledge her. There was no way I could say anything to her without me getting really ugly. So I kept my mouth shut. I carried all my boxes and suitcases out to the car and kissed Grandfather goodbye. I made him swear to call me when he got to South Carolina. I even begged him to change his mind, but he wouldn't. He said, No, Niara, I think this is best for you. And then he kissed me on my cheek. I refused to look at the woman who'd come for me. She didn't deserve even that level of respect, so I ignored her. I got into the passenger's seat and slammed the car door. I was hoping I'd slammed it so hard that the door would fall off its hinges and maybe she'd change her mind. Of course, that didn't happen. So I settled for putting on my earphones and drowning out any awareness of her by turning up the music as high as it would go. She didn't say a word to me. Instead, she started the car. We drove away. No attempt at speaking was made until she angrily reached across the seat and snatched the earphones out of my Walkman. Trying to ignore me is not going to change the situation, said Kathleen, taking her eyes off the street to look at me. I've got nothing to say to you. Don't you want to know where we're going? No. Did your grandfather tell you anything about me? Yes. Did he say why you're coming to stay with me? Yes. I said. I was anxious to end any communication with this woman. George feels that you and I... I'm tired of talking. When are you going to be finished? Look, Niara, I know this isn't easy for you, but let's not start off wrong. Don't tell me how to behave. We started off wrong years ago. I had my reasons for doing that, she explained. Please, before you even start, I don't want to hear them. All that matters is that you did it, and that's that. But I want you to understand why. No, you understand this. I don't like you, and I'm not going to. That's a real nice thing to say. Is that supposed to make me angry? Are you trying to make me change my mind about having you live with me? Have you? No. Fine. I dismissed her. Aren't you curious about where you'll be living? No. Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. I have a house in Philadelphia. Probably in some ghetto, I muttered. I guess you really do hate me. You don't have to guess. You've got a really nasty mouth, Niara. You weren't that way as a little girl. How do you know? You wasn't around that long. I was with you until you were three. Oh, now I'm supposed to be impressed. You were there for me for three whole big years. How can I thank you, Kathleen? Tell me what I should do. Don't talk to me like that. I'll say what I want. I'm not a child anymore, in case you hadn't noticed. I plugged my earphones back into the Walkman. If she wanted to talk, she could talk to herself. I was finished with this conversation. We continued the rest of the ride in semi-silence. I listened to the Walkman and said nothing. She drove over some bridge I didn't know the name of and into Philadelphia. The city looked dirty. Trash was dumped on the sides of the roads. Littered papers and beer bottles were everywhere. A trail of debris seemed to follow us all the way to the little row house we eventually pulled up in front of. I definitely was not impressed. It was a tacky looking house hidden by a white aluminium siding. The steps were severely cracked. If I wasn't careful... I could see myself falling into them and disappearing forever. For the first time, I looked directly at her and spoke. You have got to be kidding. I'm not supposed to live there, am I? I haven't been living here long. I bought the place six months ago. I am fixing it up a little at a time. The steps will be the next thing I'll get repaired. I'm going to have to live here for three months. In this run-down dump? Does it look that bad inside? 
You have a nice room, she said, evading my question. I guess it does. Get your things from the trunk. Do I have to? Yes, she said as I was walking to the back of the car. I should have known by the grey car she was driving that the house looked bad. Her car looked like it had been new in 1973. It had rust all around the trunk and sides. I hadn't really looked at it before. I'd been too angry. But looking at it now, I was embarrassed to even stand next to it. She must be really poor if she drives something like this. It was one car I definitely didn't want to be seen in again. And as if to emphasise my feelings, I quickly lifted the trunk and reached inside for my bags. I brought with me four leather bags full of clothes and a lot of cardboard boxes. The boxes were full of clothes and shoes and body products. By the time I had unloaded the trunk, Kathleen had gotten out and was leading the way up the cracked steps. I followed her. She unlocked the door and I walked into the house. I couldn't see anything until she flipped on the light and then I saw a small living room. It was neat, but everything looked old. The carpet, the couch, the wallpaper, the coffee table. It looked like she had furnished the whole room with stuff she'd bought in a Salvation Army store. I couldn't believe my eyes. Was I supposed to live here, in this cheap-looking house? You can take your things upstairs while I park the car. Your room is at the end of the hall. I hope it doesn't look as tired as this, I said, carrying my heavy bags upstairs. I made three trips up and down the stairs before I had everything piled up against one wall in the room. I wasn't about to unpack anything. I was too tired and I didn't belong here. I stretched out across the bed and hoped I wouldn't catch anything. I also hoped Kathleen would leave me alone now that all my stuff was moved in. I didn't want to talk to her. Not tonight. But I guess my hoping was in vain because she walked into the room as I was staring down at the floor. The carpet in here was a tacky blue. It was just about as flat as my chest was. I'm glad you are here, she said awkwardly. I don't know what for. I'm not here because I want to be. Grandpa made me come. I'm still glad you're here. Yeah, OK. Do you have any questions? Not really, I said, disinterested. I guess you are wondering where I have been all these years. Not any more, I said. I stopped trying to figure that out a long time ago. It's not important now. Maybe not to you, but I want you to know anyway. Go ahead. Tell me if you want. It's not going to make a difference now. I guess you know I was 16 when I got pregnant. Yeah, I know that. Grandma told me. Did she tell you that I had to raise you by myself since your father wasn't around? I know that too. Trying to take care of a small baby is real hard on somebody 16. I did it for a while, but then your grandmother offered to take you for a while until I got myself together. I can see that never happened, I mumbled. She ignored me and continued speaking. At first, I rejected the offer. But later on, I realised it was the right thing to do. I didn't want you to live the same life I did. I wanted you to finish school, not be limited because of the place you grew up in. So what happened? Where have you been? I asked. In and out of different clinics, she said truthfully. I started messing with drugs soon after you left. I thought it was no big deal. I did just a little here and there. You became an addict, I said incredulously. Not at first. It didn't seem to affect me. But soon I was using it a lot. Didn't mean to get hooked. I guess it was crack? I asked. Yeah. Cocaine is today's problem. I was depressed. A few girlfriends were doing it. Said it would make me forget all about everything. So I tried it. Boy! I looked at Kathleen. You really are dumb. Doing crack. Didn't you know how bad that stuff was? No, I didn't. You really are stupid. I know that now. You should have known it back then. Well, I didn't, she said defensively. 
So what happened to you? I got strung out and that's when your grandmother stopped hearing from me. You've been an addict for 12 years? No, I've been clean for four. Does Grandpa know what you are? Were, she corrected. He knows I'm recovering. And he still wants me to get to know you? I asked in obvious disdain. I asked him not to tell you. I wanted to be the person you heard it from. And he listened to you? He did. Because I've changed. No more drugs. I'm not making excuses, Niara. I just want you to know the truth. My life hasn't been easy. Neither is mine, I said. I'm sorry. Don't be. I had other people around to help me. I'm not proud of the past, but I want to start over again with you. You're wasting your time. I don't want to start over again with you. I want you to understand things. Does it matter now? To me, she said. That's your problem then, not mine. I know you're mad at me, but give me a chance. I know I've made a lot of mistakes, but I can change that. All I can do is go on from here. I'm not asking you to change. It was your life. You did what you wanted. I was only 16 back then. I didn't know anything. I was young and dumb. So I kept hearing. I said, rolling onto my back. I was tired of looking at her and I was tired of hearing excuses. You let her tell them to somebody else. I wasn't interested in hearing them anymore. I'm almost grown. And the last thing I needed was a mother coming back into my life. I didn't need her now. I wanted to feel sorry for her, but I couldn't. I couldn't get past all the years I waited for her to come and get me. I couldn't get past all the times I cried because of her. I refused to forgive her for any of the pain she caused me. Kathleen spoke, breaking into my thoughts. Do you spend a lot of time with your father? Same amount I spend with you, I said sarcastically. He's living in New York and he doesn't have time for me either. Oh. Are you finished yet? I guess I am, she said, and she walked out of the room. I should have been extremely happy that she was leaving me alone, but I wasn't. I felt a sadness inside that I was reluctant to admit. I didn't want to understand anything she had to say. I wanted to continue to hate her as I did all those years she never bothered to think about me. I wanted to be invincible where she was concerned. I could not allow her or anybody else to hurt me again. So I laid on the bed, watching her leave. I was being tough. I would not show her any emotion. I was not going to be weak or break down because she told me some sad story. Those were the decisions she chose to make. Now she was going to have to live with them. I closed my eyes. I just wanted to rest for a moment. I was tired. I intended to get up and put on my night clothes. But instead, I fell asleep.